Hi, I'm Greg. At Cambridge University Press, our research guides everything we do and helps keep you up to date on the key themes, ideas and principles in ELT. Which, of course, means that we can produce the best materials possible for teachers and their students. And in this video, we're looking at the key points from the Cambridge paper Learning Language in Chunks by Scott Thornbury. The learning of chunks is vital when learning a language, as language consists of chunks which, when combined, produce continuous coherent text. So, let's find out more about them. First, what exactly is a chunk? Chunks can be defined as anything that isn't either a traditional grammar structure or single word vocabulary item. Let me show you some examples. Collocations. These are words that are commonly found together. For example, you know, I think, and thanks very much. Fixed expressions. These are a combination of words that have a specific meaning. For example, keep an eye on, stand a chance, and before you know. Formulaic utterances, such as I'm on my way, or you can't be too careful. Sentence starters, such as first of all, after this, and on the other hand. And finally, idioms and catchphrases, such as a piece of cake, wild goose chase, to run out of steam, and couch potato. So, we now know what a chunk is, but why learn language in chunks? Well, research shows that there are three main arguments. The first one is fluency. Research has shown that using chunks well means a person can both speak faster and with less hesitation. The second is idiomatic language. Using chunks naturally and correctly can help a student seem more like an L1 speaker. And finally, language development. Research suggests that learning chunks helps us with language acquisition in general, although we shouldn't depend on them alone. OK, so we now know what chunks are and how they can help us. However, there are loads of chunks out there. How do we decide which ones to teach? Well, various researchers list criteria to help us choose what chunks to teach or not teach in class. Let's start with its utility. This means how useful the chunk is. Second, its frequency. This means how often the chunk is used. Third, its fixedness. This means how many of its words can be changed and it still makes sense and be appropriate. Fourth, its idiomaticity. This means how easy it is to understand from its individual words. And finally, it's teachability. This means how easy it is to make memorable. OK, so we now know what they are, how they help us, and how to choose them. However, what's the best way to teach them? So, research gives us four main approaches that a teacher can use. These are the phrasebook approach, the awareness-raising approach, the analytic approach and the communicative approach. Let's begin with the phrasebook approach. This is where pupils simply memorise set phrases for specific situations and little input is given by you, the teacher. Next, the awareness raising approach. Here, pupils will read or listen to as much real world material as possible. During this, they are then guided to noticing the chunks by their teacher, who will encourage methods such as note-taking and revisiting material several times. The analytic approach is similar to the awareness-raising approach, but with one key difference. Teachers point out the chunks in class, pupils don't discover them by themselves. Then the chunk and the features are explicitly referred to in class. Finally, in the communicative approach, small chunks of functional language are taught and then practiced 
in a communicative scenario. For example, taking surveys or doing role plays. So, research can inform you of the larger themes that you need to consider in order to teach chunks effectively in your classroom. What they are, how they help us, how to choose them, and how to teach them. However, before we finish, here are a few bite-sized bits of research to consider as well. Young learners should be taught chunks in the context of formulaic everyday interactions. For example, like making requests. Also, songs and chants are highly effective tools in teaching chunks to young learners, especially when repeated over time. When using a text to teach grammar or vocabulary, maximize its learning potential by highlighting chunks found in the text too. Educate your learners on how to recognize chunks and how to record, review, and practice them. Teachers of highly specialized courses, such as EAP, should make their learners aware of how certain chunks can become more or less appropriate depending on context. Learn to use online corpus tools, particularly ones with information on collocations and their features. And when testing your pupils' writing and speaking ability, be sure to include criteria that measures their ability to use chunks effectively as well. So that wraps up learning language in chunks. If you'd like more detail about what I've talked about in this video, please check out the Cambridge paper, Learning Language in Chunks by Scott Thornbury. You'll find the link in the video description. Enjoy teaching chunks in your classroom.